their definition of fee simple, their definition within their own act. We don't care about government's definitions. We have our own definitions. So if you want to get out of property taxes, a quick and simple way, and I'm going to cover this more uh, expansively in one of the episodes coming up, is you contact the government, the, the local municipality where you live, whoever, I don't care, and you say, excuse me, but it's my understanding that I own this property fee simple as defined by Black's Law Dictionary, which means absolute. I am the sovereign I am the sovereign authority on my land. You say, so exactly what standing do you have to be charging me property taxes? What's your standing with my property? Did you help me buy it? Do you have money invested in my property? Do you own the land? What is your standing? Who are you? And go into it from there. You can ask them all sorts of questions. Are you claiming my property is being used for a public service? Are you paying me for this service you're claiming it's performing? And what service is it performing? It's the same argument as driving. When they can't answer you, you default them. And then you say, go fuck yourself on the property taxes. And you send them a fee schedule. If you even attempt to collect on money I don't owe because this is all contract law. What you just contacted them and said basically is I'm the sovereign authority on my land. If, do you have a contract? If you claim you do, then produce it. Otherwise, don't contact me again. Find them. Take them to court if they try collecting on you or putting a caveat on your property. Sue the shit out of them. I think there's a group of farmers doing that in Ontario actually right now. Yeah, all of yeah, they've been able to shut down most of their municipality, I think, doing this stuff. Yeah, that's what I'm doing, too. One of the reasons, uh, don't mean to interrupt you, Dean, there, but can I oh, answer your thing, man. Okay, well, um, the reason why they're shutting them down is because they're, seiz uh, they're seizing the Crown Land Patent Grants. Crown Land Patent Grants is the sovereign title. When you get that, that means you are perpetually the ownership, meaning no one can have any other claims because it is the highest claim. It is the loyal title. So when you get that, no one can fucking bug you. If you got hydro or electricity that's going to your house and they try to cut off, you said I'm. Uh, you you can just say, hey, you're trespassing. If you trespass again, you have a bullet in your foot, and that's what you can do because you are trespassing on sovereign territory. Yeah, they'll just cut the wires going to your house. Though I've had that happen. Hey man, that's cool. That's damaging public property. No, it is, because, and that's what everybody has to understand. All these utilities, especially where I live in Manitoba, Manitoba Hydro is a public utility. When they sit, when they, sometimes they, they tried charging me way back in the day with, uh, with uh, tampering with uh, Manitoba Hydro property, which is one of the meters on the house. Yeah. I said, well, excuse me. I said, aren't you a public utility? If you're public, uh, that means that uh, you're owned by the public, and I'm one of the public, so how can I damage my own property? Well, they didn't, talk, they didn't want to talk to me ever again. Exactly. Now you know what I did a similar I did a similar occurrence to that too. I was uh, I was uh, dealing with my uh, with my uh, with one of my old uh, landladies, and she had some issues with hydro uh, electricity too. We got Ontario Hydro over there, right? And so I said, hey, look, you know, who like what service is this coming from? Is this coming from the public? Is are you using public funds for this? And um, they responded, said, you know, yes, that they use public service, uh, public funds coming from the consolidated revenue fund. And I said, who am I? Am I the public? Can you prove that I'm not the public? And right from there on, they never sent her another bill. It's been a year and a half, and she never received the hydro bill, never got her services interrupted. It's as easy as that. People need to understand that it's not fucking hard to do this shit. You just gotta get off your lazy ass, stop watching TV for 30 motherfucking minutes, and I can <laughs> prove this shit. Because you know what? I spent, I spent, I spent maybe a total of six hours. Now I got six acres of land, a $265,000 house coming to me very soon for 250 motherfucking dollars. Yep. Now that is not an incentive to get off your lazy ass. I don't know what the fuck will. Okay, now that, that this this is great. So I, I give this argument to people, and I say, like, what part of this don't you get? Well, I want to see it proved first. Okay, fine. Then I'll wait the two weeks, and then I'll I'll make sure that my my contact shows you pictures of his two hundred sixty thousand dollar home that he's acquired. And and once that happens, then what's going to be your next excuse for why you're not going to pursue this? Photoshop. Because it just seems that there's certain people. That fuck Photoshop. I don't want to hear that shit. I'm sick of yeah, it. Yeah, but they use that shit. It's like, oh, he could have Photoshopped it. 
oh, I totally understand. <laughs> it's like, you, you know have what? no idea how many times they people say that. It's like, oh, you photoshopped it. You know when I showed people my fucking student loan shit? It's like, oh, you photoshopped it. You edited the number. It's like, why the fuck would I waste time? Good. Good. You're right. Uh, this is all bullshit. You should go back to watching TV and paying taxes, you stupid motherfucker. Bye. Yeah, exactly. You know what? It gets to the point where you have to just know you have no other choice but to walk away because obviously the soil that you're trying to put that seed into is rejecting it. Well, yeah, and it's not my place to ar I don't argue with people. I just say, okay, congratulations. Enjoy being a slave. And I walk the other way, you know? I'll talk to somebody yeah, who wants to listen and learn. It is. Yeah. It's, it's hard, um, maybe... Maybe my um, emotions get in on it a little bit, being female, I don't know. But I have attachment to certain friendships and whatnot. And I'm getting to that point where I'm like, okay, I have to stop caring. And I have to walk away from you because you just don't get it. And I can't rack my brain anymore. And I'm not going to be belittled because you don't agree with what I'm telling you. Hey, you know what, Carrie? Tell, tell mm -hmm. them if they follow, if they follow uh, the laws, right? If they say that they follow the laws, say, hey... Curious, uh, curious, uh, curious reason that you say that. You should look up Section Nine of the Criminal Code. Ignorance of the law is of no excuse. See how well they handle that. If you say that to a lawyer, you should see them how fast they turn into a tomato. I can and you should, yeah, you I have should file else. that shit too in there too. When you have a when you have a court case and they're trying to defend themselves, put in that. Yep. Because if Ignorance you went, if you look at excuse. the annotations for the for Section Nine of that. It states that if they are neglected or if they've been informed of the law, they cannot be defending themselves beyond that point for their actions that they attempted to justify for lack of knowledge of that law. It is right in the... Uh, give, give me a second. It's in, the, it's in the book. It's the Martin's Annual Criminal Code, 2010. And it states right in there on the annotations for that section... It states that you, the um, that an officer, cannot use a defense against proper notice. Uh, proper fuck, you know what? I'm just gonna fucking what this is. So. <laughs> it's very short and it's un fucking believable how simple it is. People have to watch it too because they can they they like to move things in the criminal code year to year. They move things. Uh, in fact, they've, t they, they've completely moved one thing that I used to use in a lot, a lot of my paperwork. I used to cite Section 39.1, Defense with Claim of Right. They've taken that out. It doesn't even exist anymore now. Well, one of the main reasons and possibly legitimate is people maybe were abusing it. Oh, it's possible, but uh, they, 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 the government abuses everything in this book. They're like the Catholics of uh, Christianity. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, now I have another question, yep. if uh, you're interested. Uh, someone on the station says, I live on a leased land. How's that work with hydro? Because my bill's fucking nuts, and I don't know, I haven't been cut off yet. Okay, um, say that again. He lives on leased land. How yep. does that work with hydro? Because his bill's, like, huge right now, and they haven't cut him off. That's interesting. Uh, see, the, the problem with... Uh See, a lot of, uh, sometimes people give Robert Menard a lot of grief on a lot of the information he gives online regarding the 96 is your fix stuff. But oh, the, interesting thing is, the interesting thing is, it's, it's all correct, but they're not going to just do it because you send it to them in the mail, right? Number one, because, um, and that's not even that much standing of a bill, by the way, I'm looking online on that. Um, the, the, and, and he's doing about eight different theories when he fills out these things and thumbprints it and circling the 96 and quoting the part of the CPA and accepting it, you know, pur consumer purchase and everything. I mean, there's parts of the Bill of Exchange Act in that. There's part of the, there's about nine different uh, theories on some of the documents he's sending in. Um, it, it's, it's not that they're incorrect. It's just they just don't give a shit. They know we can't do anything about it anyway. So they're stealing those documents. They're collecting on things twice by getting you to pay cash, and they're taking your endorsed remittance, and they're keeping it all. So, if people want to want to try using some of the consumer purchase things on inv on, on on remittances like hydro bills, you have to start enforcing these things. Which means don't don't send them to the receiver general for Canada. Okay, uh, I think that's a wrong approach. Send your 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 endorsed remittances to the minister of finance for your individual province. 
and then send a cover letter with it, letting your Minister of Finance know that you're appointing them as the fiduciary trustee of this matter from now on. You're going to be sending them all these remittances, and you're giving them instructions to settle the accounts. And now that puts you into a trust relationship where you've appointed, and you give them a time to, to refuse the appointment and give reasons as to why they're refusing. Because as a public servant and as a public minister, they cannot. That's their job. So start doing things that way, and you're going to start to see some interesting things happen. But you've got to be yeah. able to enforce it again like a fee schedule. I'm going to fine you if you don't do your job for every single one of these remittances I send in, and you dishonor it by, by not settling the accounts but keeping it, well, that's an act of baritry. They're actually absconding with all that now. They're stealing directly from your estate, and they know that we're never going to do anything about it. So that's why people have to learn how to file civil claims, liens, and start to go after the government. And this is not anti-government speech. This is, keep, this is holding government in check. If it's against the law to want to to want to take the government's boot off my neck, then fuck it, I'm a criminal. And and most definitely we're not criminals. We are not criminals. People wanting to hold their government in check, and that's what the checks and balances in the system are supposed to be, are not criminals, and that's us and we're the only people doing it. Lawyers aren't doing it. Corporations aren't doing it. Uh, government doesn't police themselves. RCMP will not file charges against a member of the government or against their own organization or police or anything. It's up to us to do that. Yeah. We're, and, and exactly what Derek said, nobody's complaining. Just like the Nazis, nobody's complaining. Nobody has filed an actual criminal complaint yet. So do it. Why, why do we have Her Majesty's forces stationed in Canada? They're because they are the protectors of Commonwealth. There They're there to protect our interests and not They're theirs. They're supposed to be there to protect us from government if we file a complaint. So people got to get, start getting used to the idea of a provost marshal and the military and sending criminal complaints. Now, don't do this because you have a grievance with government. You have to exhaust all your administrative remedies first before you then go to the to, to the top guy, right? You have to exhaust all your administrative remedies. If you, otherwise, it's frivolous. You don't just you know you don't just send a letter to the queen saying oh they shut off my electricity and they wouldn't accept my remittance right yeah it, w it doesn't work that way no. you have to go up the command the chain of command that's go up how the chain you do of command. it yeah okay so I got the annotations for the ignorance of the law check this out by virtue of this section ignorance whether the existence of the law or of its meaning scope or application is no defense thus an accused ignorance that a certain drug has been added to whatever, you know, Schedule H or the Food and Drug Ministry, uh, Act, sorry, by breaking which was published in the Canada Gazette was no defense to a charge of trafficking in that drug contrary to whatever the case is. Where on a trial for provincial offenses, the only possible defense an accused can put forward is his ignorance of the fact that his license has been suspended by the provisions of the provincial statute which constitutes a mistake of law and is therefore not available as a defense the accused is effectively denied the defense of due diligence in those circumstances the offense must be characterized as absolute liability that's coming straight from uh, Martin's uh, 2010 criminal code and then what that states is if you try to use it, any defense any defense okay it won't fucking go through because the, the way judge sees it is you are being ignorant of the law. Okay? Exactly. When the government has been given, uh, has given notice, which they always do through Canada Gazette, and if the public servants or whoever is getting charged through the conventional bullshit way states that he, uh, he's trying to st and establish in a defense or whatever, will not go through because the judge will not give a shit, the prosecutor will not give a shit. Because in their eyes, they see you're being ignorant of the law. That's why Dean Clifford's approach is really good because it just removes yourself from all of their bullshit. And that it is does, why it really this does. way is extremely effective. For example, I what I did in the last two weeks, ever since I've seen during, uh, Dean Clifford's uh, video, I said, you know what? Fuck it. I'm feeling. I feel like I got a ball, whale balls. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to hear. I'm starting to hear that so often now. By the way, it's freaking hilarious. So many people are 
Yeah, you know what? I like that video. Fuck it. I'm I'm doing this now. <laughs> well, I love it. It's awesome. But uh, yeah, so what I do? I sent a notice to the Canadian government saying asking one question. I said, "Does